Um, hello and welcome to another presentation. This time we will talk about intrinsic stresses. So this is like the part two of the very first video I made called Implants of a Lifetime. And yeah, if you want to watch this one before you watch the intrinsic stress video, you can go ahead and the link is in our description. But I will also talk a little bit about the problem and the solution here in this video. Now, um, yes, at very first, we in our video before, in our very first video, Implants of a Lifetime, we have talked about implants, obviously. Now, how, uh, as you can see here, we have two examples of implants. We have one, the knee implant, and we have the hip, hip implant. I just wanted to show you how they are inside, uh, positioned inside the body, so that you can imagine it. Of course, there are way more implants, but I just wanted to show you two, to not make it too much. Now, however, we had a problem. The, because we talked about how the implants were being built and that's what they look like. We, they are made with a one layer and with a substrate down there. Now we have a problem and the problem is this. And how is this created? This is plastic flow down in the substrate. So when a counterpart presses on our implant, plastic flow starts to create uh, starts to create yes, starts to create in the substrate. But not always. And so we talked in our last video we talked about why is that so and how can we stop it? I'm gonna show you. So here we have the counterpart, and this is the plastic flow, the very first layer, and the substrate. So now I have made you a co comparison. This shows us um, what we what the mistake is. So over here we have a very small contact area size with the counterpart pressing on this subs on, on our material or on our implant. So but throughout the pictures the contact area size gets bigger and this is our solution. So our problem is that small contact area sizes are being survived and bigger contact area sizes are starting to destroy our substrate which is very fatal. Now, um, in this picture, this was the picture I've shown you before. It was. It is only a only three micrometer contact area radius, and it slowly starts to the the substrate slowly starts to get damaged. And over here, we have the worst case scenario with a twenty one micrometer contact area size. So, well, here yeah, I've shown you a little graph where you can see a comparison of, again, all the different examples I've shown you before, from the worst case scenario to the best case scenario. So, yeah, because of that, we found a solution. And our solution was pretty simple. Just add a second layer. That was it. So, as you can see here, we have two times the worst case scenario. One with the implants of today, huge damage, marked with black dots. And here we have our solution. And as you can see there, this is our substrate. This is the second layer, this is the first layer. And no damage, no black dots. So, this is brilliant. This already is great. So yeah, here I've shown you again from close up, second layer, first layer, and the substrate. So yeah, our solution can even be improved more, but how can we do this? That's what the video is all about. It's about intrinsic stresses. 
So here you can now see, wait a minute, he just added or he just added the second layer or divided the second layer into four pieces. No, all of this is the second layer. But what's, what is it then? These are different eye stress fields where, and what is, what are eye stress fields and how can you create them? So eye stress fields you can create them pretty easy. Just while you make the material you have to, you have to put it under stress while it's being made. That's how you create eye stress fields. So we have done this four times with the second layer. And yeah, so this created an even better, uh, an improved solution. Here is it from a comparison. These are the implants of today. Huge damage. Our solution, almost no damage. And our solution with eye stresses, almost no damage. So even better, as I already said, improved solution. Now I just wanted to show you something because as you can see here I already show I have already shown you some videos um, before in my very first video. And yeah, I just wanted to tell you that we now can calculate our indenter or our counterpart. I like to call it indenter, but it's actually the counterpart. Or you can understand it better if I say counterpart. Now yeah, we can now calculate it with it so you can imagine it better how, what is even happening in the video, why is there starting to get stress. It's because of this thing, it's because of the counterpart. So yeah, I've shown you now our video with, in, well, I mean our solution with intrinsic stresses. And yeah, as you already can see, it starts to get a little bit green over here but it's not much. See, it's almost nothing. So our substrate is completely fine. And also the very first and the second layer are completely fine because they can tank more than the substrate. Now here we got another example because we know that um, the counterpart doesn't always hit from straight up to straight down directly onto it. But sometimes it has like a little angle. So we've also made a video about that and also this is being survived. I think it looks even better I would say and yeah this is just brilliant. Now it's still going, it's not going. So now. So yeah this is my very first video if you want to know m more about how we solve this problem and all, um, you can go ahead and watch the video. Again, the link is in the description. And yeah, I would like, I would like you to watch the video. That's, this is also the link. So, yeah, now we've got an even better solution. So here we've added, you can even do it way better. So here we've just added more intrinsic stress um, fields, eye stress fields. And we've also added them in the very first layer. So there are intrinsic stress fields everywhere, eye stress fields. And as you can see, it is also the worst case scenario. This is the end of the video and you can see almost no, uh, nothing in the substrate and almost no yellow up here. So even better. Now before we end this video, um, I also I wanted to show you how you can calculate the eye stresses or the eye stress fields in the film doctor. So we're going to see us in a bit and I will show you how to do it. So hello, I'm back again and yeah, now I'm going to show you how to calculate eye stressors in the film doctor studios. Now as you can see here, I've opened up a completely new project. And yeah, what you want to do to calculate eye stresses, you have to go to this field which has eye stress optimization. Click on it and you're gonna come to a table which is pretty similar to the one used in the film director simulation. Now 
here you can add layers and you can change the layer thickness. I'm gonna change this layer thickness to 10 and over here I'm gonna change it to 34. Now, well, now we've added some layers and yeah, this was basically it. If you want to change, because I've already talked about eye stress fields, if you want to change the amount of eye stress fields you want to have in your layer, then you just have to go down there and change this number. If you want more, you can have six. If you want less, you can have four. But we're gonna work with five today, okay? So this page is also very similar, or very, very, this page is also very well known for those who use Film Doctor very often, because over here you can calculate your indenter. With this, you can calculate the radius of the indenter, or I always say indenter, but you understand it as the counterpart. I'm gonna leave this radius like this, and this is the fourth with which the indenter will hit on. I'm gonna change this to 20. Now calculate, and you can press OK. So over here you will be able to see the results, um, but in order to calculate them, you will have to press on this little button, Start Optimization, and you will see them. I'm gonna cut over here because um, you don't want to see this the whole time because it's very boring. We're gonna see us in a bit. Here we have our result. On this picture you can see the um, material we use without the eye stress fields. And here you can see it with the eye stress fields. Now all of these little things are no layers, just as I told you before. These are the eye stress fields. So yeah, that was basically is it. That was how you can calculate it, how you can calculate eye stresses in the film doctor. I thank you all for watching and I hope you're having a great day. And until next time I see you. Bye bye.